pregame.com. Wednesday night baseball, Cleveland Indians travel to play the third place Detroit Tigers. Brian, I know you're finding that uh, enjoyable being that you're a Cleveland Indian fan. This is your pick. Are you going to go hometown uh, boys, uh, Cleveland, or what? Well, this is a big revenge series for Detroit as Cleveland swept them back last week back in uh, Cleveland. But I'm going to take a look at this at a different angle. I'm going to take a look at the over. Uh, when you go back and take a look at uh, Gomez's starts in his career against Detroit, he hasn't faced him this year. But last year, Detroit hit 382 against him with an OPS of 1.108. Mm -hmm. The previous year, 2010, they hit 349 mm -hmm. against him with an OPS of 830. Mm -hmm. Not very good numbers. And it's a situation, Detroit's a very good hitting team. They're just not hitting well right now. Uh, we talked a little bit before we got on the air about the Cleveland right now. Their pitching staff is struggling a little bit. And then you take a look at Matt Scher or Scherzer. Uh, first time he's faced the Indians this year. But last year, the Indians hit 240 against him with a 699 OPS. The year before, 284 with an 834. So we think Detroit have a little bit of an advantage in this game. But take a look at what Detroit's done at home as of late. 7-13, and 13, straight up at home. And that includes games against the likes of the Pirates, the Twins, easy now. the Royals, <laughs> and the Mariners. So I don't know if I want to lay this big number right here with Detroit. I think we're better off taking the over in this game because I know Detroit's going to put some runs up on the board. And Cleveland's a team who draws a lot of walks. And I think for sure, sir, that's a problem. It makes them stay into the strike zone, makes it easier for Cleveland to hit. I think we're going to take a look at the over here. Well, one thing with, you know, I can't disagree with you on the over because uh, Cleveland, their pitching staff is, they're getting lit up like a Christmas tree right now. Uh, they have just been, uh, Gomez in particular, he started the season well, but his last two starts, he's got pounded. And if you go back, the S Cleveland staff, eight of the last nine games, the staff has given up five runs or more, and you said they've played some good hitting teams, but you're averaging seven and a half runs a game. Pitching staff's getting overworked, so if Gomez gets knocked out and you've got to go to the bullpen, the bullpen's not had vacation lately. They, they've been on call, uh, you know, on the ready every night. So I like Detroit to get some runs in this game. Uh, me personally, um, I don't have an official play on here, but I was actually leaning to Detroit. They're going to be a big price. Right. I don't want to lay the price, and I know there's a lot of school of thought, you know, with run lines, and some people say sometimes lane runs, uh, you know, is square or take the plus runs and that. I don't have a problem in the right situation of laying one and a half runs. To me, if I have a pitching staff that's blowing up, that I feel is going to give me five or six runs, my, my team's going to score five or six runs, and I like my starting pitcher, I would rather lay the one and a half runs and get back a buck five or be maybe minus 115 at worst than lay 180 or 190 or 200 on a game. And I think Detroit fits into that pattern. You mentioned Matt Shearzer. I think this guy, and we talked about him in the video last week, uh, this is an underrated pitcher right now in the majors. He's got a high ERA because at the beginning of the season, he had a horrible start first game of the season he only went like two innings and gave up a ton of runs and he's been battling that ER, ERA ever since. This guy in his last three starts has struck out 30 guys. That's one way to erase walking people is when you strike somebody out. You're, you're clearing the bases with you know no movement. Uh, also he has been solid with three runs or less in his outings eight of his last ten starts. So if I got a guy that I feel the odds are showing me he's in current form and he's going to give up three runs or less and the opposing team's going to give me five or six runs, I'm okay with laying one and a half runs. I fully understand what you're talking about. In fact, his last three starts, the opposition has only scored three for the entire game, not only when he was in there, but for the entire game. But the problem you have is Detroit, if they are winning this game, you're only going to get eight innings to lay minus one and a half against a team right. who's going to bat for nine innings. And for the strikeouts, I don't think he's going to have as many strikeouts against Cleveland because Cleveland's a team that takes walks. And, you know, he can overpower him. He's got the stuff to overpower him. And right now Cleveland's got some player, key players out of the lineup, which is always a concern. But I'm not sure we're going to get another 10 strikeout performance from him. All right. Will your official play in this one? I will take the over.
Take the over, and we're looking at a posted total. We're projecting this as nine. We're taping on Monday. This game's being played on Wednesday. We're both in agreement it should come out at nine. If you see nine or less, Brian likes it over. And that's it for the first part of the week. We're going to be back later in the week. We'll be looking at games for the rest of the week, NBA and baseball. We'll have Vegas Runner and Scott Sprites are in here at pregame.tv. And don't forget, it's Belmont week. We're going for a triple crown this week. We'll have videos on that as well. If you're doing your thing.